So in a previous video, I talked about using mechanical pain to your advantage and using it as a marker of overreaching. In that video, I just briefly kind of glossed over if you get into pain, you should get out of pain and you should you know, figure out how to make sure your stuff's working correctly so that you can push yourself in training again. And this week, I wanted to kind of go deeper into that topic. When you set those time frames, your body doesn't give a shit what you think. Your body's not like, oh, well, he wants to train or she wants to train in two weeks, so I'll make sure I make my healing process just at that speed so that you can get back in the game. It doesn't care. It's going to operate on its own timetable. And if you respect its timetable, you're more likely to be able to heal and get back to training faster. One of the things that I first wanted to do is explain that pain is a complicated thing. I think a lot of people assume there's pain, something's wrong, or I'm in pain, I have an injury. And that kind of causal relationship that people automatically jump to in their brain becomes a problem if you wanna push yourself long-term in training. Pain is a signal that's coming from your nervous system. It's an emotion, and we don't really know exactly what it is. We know that pain receptors exist and they can operate on an intense-based spectrum so they can get triggered at a certain level of intensity or not triggered, and there's going to continue to be research that comes out that explains more comprehensively what pain is. But the first thing I always tell people to do is not panic when something happens in their head, like, oh my God, I'm in pain, something's wrong. That in and of itself creates a threatened state in your body, and over time, if you're constantly in that threatened state, eventually, you're going to blunt your own progress. I know in my athletic career, I got shoulder surgery, I broke my wrist, I broke my ankle, I got knee surgery, I tore the labrum in my hip, I had herniated discs, I had multiple concussions, and eventually you're pushing yourself and it just becomes harder and harder to overcome that constant input of, oh my God, everything hurts. I get up out of the bed and everything's bothering me. Now, that was a consequence of bad training and a bad mind state with regards to like constantly pushing myself and constantly going into places that I shouldn't have been going to as a young athlete, which is kind of where the process of my learning as a coach and my evolution of knowledge with regards to pain, the nervous system, and movement came from. So in the fitness culture, it seems that there's kind of two major like sides or factions. There's the one that's very academic and constantly thinking of pain as this negative experience that you should never be in if you train. If you go and you kind of hang out in that community, oftentimes you'll not really see that many people that are extremely high level sufferers. They're not super powerful, super strong, super enduring or high level in sports. Now they might move well, they might have long-term health, it might produce longevity for those people, but on a, as a general rule of thumb, if you're that conservative and careful around pain, you might be leaving some progress on the table. The opposite side of the spectrum, the like winning at all cost sides is like, you know, go as hard as you can, run your head into the wall. If you're in pain, push through it and don't be soft. And I think that there's a, a negative consequence to both of those two ways of thinking. And like usual, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I think it all is context and goal dependent. If you want to be a high level athlete, especially in a sport like let's say CrossFit, for example, you're probably going to get pain signals in your body at some point. There's a ton of mechanical stress. Sometimes your joints are challenged at end ranges where you're going to get compression and irritation in the joint or tendonitis type sy symptoms. And sometimes those things are just unavoidable with regards to training. Now, I think your relationship, both psychologically and emotionally, um, with regards to pain is an extremely important thing when you're get, trying to get out of pain. And that's what I wanted to talk about is the process that A, I've used now in kind of like my second 
athletic venture, which is trying to figure out how to be as athletic as possible as a business owner who's coaching athletes versus when I was younger and just full-time thinking about athlete, 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 and not really spending time deviating towards building a business or building content or making sure my athletes are ready for game day. And in that quest, even as a you know, as somebody who doesn't push themselves as hard as they used to, I still experience pain. And I've evolved this process orientation around pain that allows me to get out of pain quicker, work around the pain, and get back into training quicker. And that momentum has allowed long-term pro progress to flow. So after the last video, Mike, Mike suggested, hey, I think you should sit down and do a video about what the process is that you go to get people out of pain. So that's what's kind of written on the board here. It's kind of a, a five-step reduced process. And I tried to keep the words up here simple, and then I'm gonna to try to go into an explanation about each uh, mini step. So the first step is just relax. I always laugh when people tell me that, uh, especially when I was younger, people would be like, oh, relax, you're so uptight, you're so tense, you're so intense, just relax. I'm like, what, what does that mean? Like. I don't just have a button on my head that I press and I'm like, ah, oh, oh, I feel better. Uh, the scientific community might call this getting into a parasympathetic nervous system state. You know, your mom might just say, hey, you know, you should relax and take it easy. You know, your friends will tell you you're uptight. But essentially what you're trying to do, or the way that I describe it is the anxiety or like a ramping up of your central nervous system or a ramping up of your autonomic nervous system into a sympathetic state is like turning up your thoughts per minute. Oh my God, my arm's broken. What's going on? What's going to happen? I'm never going to be able to use my arm. That state is what you want to get out of if you start to experience pain. So if you're in the middle of a lifting session, for example, you do a clean, say you catch it a little wonky because you're a little sweaty, you know, you jam your wrist up. The first thing that's likely to happen, especially if you haven't experienced pain or something bad in a training environment, is your brain is probably going to go insane. And it's gonna think of the worst possible scenarios ever. I think the first major injury I had was a, uh, a subluxation of my shoulder in football and tearing my labrum and bicep tendon. And I remember coming off the field and my arm was kind of like numb and stingy and it was like radiating pain in my neck, but I didn't want to come off the field. So I kind of just like moved my arm around and then, you know, after getting it checked out, they're like, well, you know, you can keep playing, but it's definitely torn and it needs to get figured out. And when they told me, hey, you have these tendons that are torn, it almost made the anxiety worse. So the pain signals were still in my shoulder and I could deal with them. I could kind of move my arm around. I couldn't get it overhead that well, but I could move and I could actually continue to play football. But the psychological stress of being like, oh my God, there's something wrong was inhibiting my ability to be rational and figure out what the next steps were with regards to training and taking care of my body. And after enough injuries, I started to realize like, oh, well, whatever is going on, I'm gonna have to deal with. And worrying about it is suffering twice because I'm psychologically then worrying about what the worst possible case scenario that's going on is and also worrying or having to deal with the actual pain that exists here. So when I tell people, okay, something happened, it's not good, it's, you know, you're experiencing pain, take some deep breaths and relax. And that process of relaxation could be getting more information, just getting a medical practitioner to take a look at you and make sure that something's like not completely wrong. Uh, but it's just a, taking your system and like bringing the volume down and just being like, okay, like let me get back to a baseline and let me just chill. The severity of the injury generally will dictate how long you're in that state. Now, obviously if it's bad enough, like I, I don't even, I have to say this, but like call 911 and make sure a medical practitioner takes care of it. But I'm talking about just like normal pains that come with regards to training. So going back to the example, boom, wrist happens, brain, oh my God, I broke my wrist. The reality is you probably didn't break your wrist. Even if you heard some crunching or something that didn't sound good, step back, you know, figure out what's going out. And then after you get yourself relaxed, step two is know thy enemy. And in this case, the enemy is your pain. 
a personal trainer or a coach like myself, we can't diagnose an issue. So the first thing you have to do is go find a professional, physical therapist, orthopedic doctor. You can go get some imaging. Now, there's problems with all of these modes of figuring out what's going on. Now, I, we're continually finding new things internally in our anatomy. We're continually finding out that there's inaccuracies with regards to MRI imaging. We're continually finding out that if you send your MRI, MRI imaging to multiple different people, you get multiple different like explanations of what's going on. We know that somebody can be experiencing pain without any sort of mechanical injury. We know that we could be experiencing uh, no pain but have a mechanical injury. So that poses a little bit of problem if you're trying to understand what's going on. However, the more information that you can get, the better. So you go through every avenue to upgrade your understanding of what's going on in my wrist. And in that understanding, not only should you be seeking sensory information and information and knowledge from the outside world, but you should be exploring your own body. And I think that's where the disconnect sometimes comes when people talk about this. I heard a quote from Ido Portal, who's a famous movement coach, and he was talking about people exploring their pleasures. Like he was talking about sexuality and people are willing to explore their pleasure all the time. But not many people are willing to explore their pain. And I found that very interesting because it's true. Like most of the time, if somebody's like, oh my God, my wrist hurts if I do this, the first thing they do is stop doing this with their wrist because it hurts. And they're not actually exploring and understanding. So step three, after you find out, so the PT tells you like, hey, you might have irritated some of the tendons in there, like you're just feeling some tendonitis and some swelling because you kind of jarred things out. There's no broken bones, you should be okay, but you're still experiencing pain, so take it easy. Now, obviously you need that clear first. You can't be like, oh, well my knee kind of hurts, but I'm gonna do things anyway because you might actually have a torn ACL or something that needs to be repaired or taken care of. But assuming that you're just experiencing pain, the next thing you'd wanna do is explore. So. Let's just say we're back to our same example. We jammed our wrist doing cleans and we find out that when I take my wrist into extension with a closed fist, it hurts. But if I go, what happens if I go open fist? Or what happens if I go open fist into flexion? Or what happens if I go closed fist into flexion? What happens if I go finger extension? And start to explore the process of what's painful and what ranges are bothering you. When you figure out what's painful, then you can say, okay, well, what I need to do there is turn that into a rehabilitary, rehabilitatory training, and then everything else can get trained. So if this range of your wrist doesn't hurt, you can still train that. You can do wrist curls, or you can do gymnastics, positional strength, or you can do false grip training, and then to build wrist extension and build confidence, you can start to train it. So. The way that we'll train from a step in step four is from isometrics into eccentrics with the goal of increasing movement range and then finally going back to dynamic training. So if I were to say, okay, I want wrist extension because that's what hurts, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do isometrics. So I wouldn't use my own finger as resistance, but for the sake of the camera, I go into wrist extension and I'm gonna press in like a PNF stretch and then I'm gonna pull off and do an isometric contraction in the opposite direction. The range that you select that you would do this training in is gonna be about five degrees away from the pain receptors. And some of these concepts comes from Andreo Spina um, and the FRC system and PNF stretching. And it's just out there in rehabilitatory settings if you wanna do some more research on your own. So this is just like a, basic informational guide for you to get out of pain. And if you want, you can go and do some more research to figure out how to upgrade this process for yourself. After that, when you start to increase the range and when you start to get more comfortable, you can start to do eccentric training. So if we're doing eccentric training, we would potentially get the wrist into extension and then we'd wanna lengthen these muscles under load. And that slowly, that two, those two things as we go through that process will increase our movement range until we can get back into the range and we're comfortable to be in there without pain. Once you're there, 
then you're just back to dynamic normal training again. So that process is kind of a four step process to get out of pain. Now, while that's going on in this local issue, so, okay, I'm experiencing pain here. What does that prevent me from doing in my lower body? Maybe nothing. Like maybe, okay, I can't do front squats, I can't do back squats, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't still be training your legs. So you could do safety bar squats, you could figure out can you hold a med ball like this and do goblet squats or a kettlebell or there's a ton of movement variation stuff that you could work around in your training, continue to push your training priorities without damaging this any farther. So this small aspect of your body becomes rehabilitatory and the rest of your body, you still want to train to figure out how to progress towards your training goals. And then step five is obviously repeating this process. I put that there almost to make everybody understand that no matter what you do, if you're pushing your body in training, you're probably going to experience pain at some point. I've never met a world-class athlete in my entire life that said, oh, my entire athletic career was pain-free. I've met some trainees, some people who are famous fitness people that say that they've been pain-free. But if you're pushing your body as a performance vessel, the likelihood is at some point you're gonna hit a limitation or a threshold and that threshold is gonna exceed the force capabilities of a certain joint and you're gonna get hurt uh, or you're gonna experience some pain and that's okay. The key or the artistic framework of coaching then becomes how do I work around this in a way that my net progress is higher and this small thing doesn't hold me back. So we're continually going through this process with our athletes, figuring out, okay, why are you in pain? Let's figure out how to get you out of pain. Okay, now this is in pain. What can we do over here to train? And that process continually happens with people. So that's the process. The things that I see that people do, I call them common errors over here. The first common error with regards to just getting out of pain in general is that people are over-reliant on their coach, their physical therapist, or their chiro, and every time they experience pain, they're like, oh my God, I gotta set up a meeting. That's okay. I think it's good to be pro or to be reactive to pain. If you have a pain response, you should go see somebody. But let's say you go two hours a week to go and see a professional and they give you a couple exercises. What about the 24 hours a day, seven days a week, other movement and time that you're spending with your body. What are you doing there? And that I think is where the magic of understanding how your body should move, how it operates, why you're experiencing pain, that is where it is. It's in your internal understanding of understanding how do I connect my mind to my body? How do I perceive what's going on and figuring out how it's supposed to go? Or what can I read to help me upgrade my knowledge base? And when you're over-reliant on somebody else, your own self-reliance drops. So one of the things that I try to do with my athletes is encourage them to get multiple different perspectives. Go talk to that person. Go talk to that person. Read this. Figure out what's going on with your body so that you can be proactive and make sure that it doesn't happen again in the future. Um, second, people are afraid of pain. Every time they experience it, they're like, oh my God, something's wrong. That's not the case. Um, there's actually a research piece that talks about the positive aspects of pain that we talked about in our open camp. And pain in some cultures is not vilified like it is in, I don't know, maybe Western society has become more hedonistic and where it's like all about pleasure and pain has become this bad thing. Some positive physical adaptation does come as a result of physical suffering. So pain is not always bad. We're willing to put ourselves in pain if we're on the assault bike because we think that it's gonna make us leaner or make us improve our ability to endure suffering. Why then is mechanical pain any different that we should always associate it with as a bad experience? And sometimes I found that even just changing somebody's perception of that and making them think, oh, it's not always a bad thing, actually reduces the suffering of the actual experience. So that would be number two. The third is setting timelines. So this is more of a chronic pain thing. Uh, I know a lot of people that are in pain. 
and they think to themselves like, okay, I'm, you know, my back's bothering me, but I'm going to do this protocol and in two weeks I'll be back on my small off cycle. When you set those time frames, your body doesn't give a shit what you think. Your body's not like, oh, well, he wants to train or she wants to train in two weeks, so I'll make sure I make my healing process just at that speed so that you can get back in the game. It doesn't care. It's going to operate on its own timetable. And if you respect its timetable, you're more likely to be able to heal and get back to training faster. If you're like, well, hey, I wanna train at two weeks and your body's not fully healed, you're probably gonna increase the likelihood of injury or you're gonna be so stressed out if on day 13 you're not feeling 100% and you wanna train in two days. So setting timelines and imposing your mind's beliefs about when you should train becomes just a problem long term. Uh, Next would be, I'm not training. I think people think of accessory work or isometrics or basic gymnastics or yoga as non-training. They only think of going hard as hard training, which then means every time they're going easy, they're stressed out in their head because they think, well, I'm not doing what I should be doing to be at a high level. That's not true. You can make progress in a million different ways. And some of those are with slower, easier, more sensitive training disciplines. And it's important to understand that you can get better without constantly pushing yourself to the maximal level of exhaustion. Now, if you are in a sport that requires that, there does need to be a time of the year that you're going hard, really hard. But that doesn't mean that the other training is unimportant. Uh, the last well, I guess the last two behaviors are not synergistic. So lifestyle has to be has to be controlled in a way that makes sure that your pain receptors are like calming down and your nervous system is calming down. It's like lower intensity training, quality nutrition, extra sleep, getting massages and PT and soft tissue work, taking care of your body, contrast baths, just anything that's gonna overall improve your likelihood of reducing the pain signaling. I know some people are like, oh, well, I gotta get a hard breather in today, so you know, even though my shoulder hurts, I'm just gonna do some you know, watt bike sprints and push myself until I'm gonna die. Now, normally I would say like, okay, well, you know, if you're in a time of the year where you have to keep your engine up like, and train, that might be okay, but you wanna make sure that if pain is stopping you from training and stopping you from doing what you need to do, that all your behaviors are synergistic with getting out of pain. And then the final thing that I have is an oversimplification. I try to tell everyone all the time with all problems, make it as simple as necessary. For my pain, the chronic pain that I was in, just mostly it was back pain and shoulder and upper back pain, I kept going to experts over and over that were simplifying the problem. Like, oh, your upper back's tight, your rhomboids aren't firing, your external rotators aren't firing. Okay, give me a protocol that helps with that, go through the protocol, I'm still in pain. Oh, your, you know, your lower back hurts, somebody would be like, oh, it's your foot strength. You need to do it, intrinsic foot strength stuff and improve your arch. Okay, I do that, no change, nothing's improving. And so the simplified ideas that were out there or you know, somebody sent me John Sarno's research about back pain and, and how that's a, a mental issue. It's like, okay, well, okay, it's all, in your, it's all in your head. It's all in your head, your back doesn't hurt. Those thought processes were too simple for what was going on in my body. And that oversimplification just left me frustrated for a really, really, really long time. Now, if your issue is simple, like, oh, I figured out my back pain, I just need to drink eight cups of water a day and I, my back doesn't hurt, great. Keep it as simple as you possibly can. But the reality is, as we start training more and as we start pushing our bodies more, as we start to get older, as our emotional systems start to get more complex and integrated and we become responsible for other people's emotions, these pain signals just start to become very, very, very complicated and they start to take into consideration a lot of variables that we're not really necessarily considering just in this process. So make sure if you're frustrated because you've been in pain for a while and you keep going to experts that give you simple ideas as to how to get out of them and they're not working, that there are more complex ways of thinking out there and there are more complex plans to get yourself out of pain and you should 
constantly be pushing yourself to be in a state of a pain-free existence so that you can push yourself and potentially find new pain as a result of that pushing. But the goal should always be to feel good in your body. And if you're constantly in pain, that's probably not going to be a positive experience for you. So that's my process with regards to getting out of pain. It's obviously like step by step in here, but it's a little bit soft. There's no timelines. You know, you can have massage mixed in here with PT, soft tissue work, Mark Pro, whatever things that you use that already are working, you should continue to work. And this is just a framework for, for thinking about the process. So I know people have heard a ton of experts get up and talk about pain and how to get out of pain. And I think even this video could cause a problem in that it's talking about information that should be helpful for you. And a lot of times people get lost in information and they stop acting. This is a challenge to you. If you get hurt or if something is bothering you, you have to continue to explore your body and figure out how it moves properly, how to get out of pain, what movement patterns don't cause pain, what training methods get you out of pain, what accessory work helps you get out of pain, and continue that process of exploration with regards to your body the same way that you explore your mind in books and your relationships with sexual partners and wives and husbands, and you should constantly be using your body as an exploratory tool, and pain shouldn't stop that process.